Welcome back. Now we'll show you how Coraline was made. Small world. In making Coraline, virtually everything you see on screen is made by hand. Every blade of grass has been painted or built. Every tree. They've got rooms where they're painting trees. It's astonishing. I honestly am so still taken aback by the, the costumes. It's so amazing that somebody can actually sew those. It's incredible. I just think the animation is so terrific. It's amazing how the animators can take your voice and just pick up every little inflection and move it with the puppet to make it look so real. I look at it and I feel so guilty. There's all these people working and they're having to do stuff and they've, they've got rooms there full of people painting things and I just, I, I keep feeling like apologizing to them all and, um, and what's bizarre is that they're incredibly grateful to be working on this and, and they're really pleased and I just sort of go, no, I'm really sorry, you know, I didn't know that it would have been so much work. I'm fairly sure if you count all of the ink and paper, probably cups of tea as well. Making Coraline the book probably cost me $30. A little me? A puppet is a fully poseable doll. Everything on the puppets that we make have to be very flexible. The skins have to be very flexible. The skeleton inside has to be very strong. The hair has to be animatable. Whoa. The core of a puppet for stop frame animation is it has an armature, which is a little bit like a human skeleton. And it's manipulated by a human being, an animator. And it has to be tensioned in a way that each joint of that puppet can move, but then hold the placement that the animator has put into. We needed to have a greater range of expression, so we decided that we would treat the upper part of the face and the lower part separately so you could control eyes, eyebrows, separately from mouths. <gasps> they were showing me, they were like, and this just popped, and I was like, oh my god, it pops off, my face is gone. The clothes that she wears, I would wear in a second. I love her raincoat and her swampers, that's Coraline to me. The clothes are all like hand sewn. I mean, it was silk and weaved, little tiny sweaters actually knitted. I mean, it's crazy how amazing these people are. Wow. Coraline was one of the first puppets I'd ever worked on that had a whole wardrobe of clothes. And she has nine different outfits, which is a challenge because we had to make the body work with nine different outfits. I hope you like the new outfit I made you. Love, Mother. I love the sweater with the stars on it. I held it in my hands today, and wow. it's totally knitted. It's totally normal sweater, just teeny. Everything has to be made, and pretty much made from scratch. So everything from the floor she walks on, to the walls of the background, to the sky outside of her window has to be created. We don't go to the prop shop and pick up, you know, some shrubs or mailboxes. Due to the size of things, everything's miniature, and sort of the overall look we were trying to achieve, it all had to be made by hand. Stock motion animation? Yes. You know, stock motion animation. Pitch and passion patient, but stock pitch and passion animation. Stop motion animation is an old technique where you frame at a time, move a puppet tiny increments 24 times a second to create the illusion of motion. I've been trying to explain this to my parents for 20 years and they still don't understand. I don't understand. Of course you don't understand. Well, there's 24 frames per second and in each one of those frames you will have to move maybe 20 little pieces, fingers and arms and legs and head and hair and everything else. I mean, you've got to keep focused and you've got to make sure everything's moving on every frame. Oh look April, pink ladies. And so yeah, it takes a long time. Making up a song about Coraline. One of the reasons it's so magical for me is it's an actual performance through the puppet by the animator. Some things do what they do best, and I think Caroline in stop motion just makes me happy. Whoa! <laughs> it really takes patience from people like Henry Selick to, you know, do the stop motion and move the hand and the mouths and throw on a new head and everything. If the shot's really good, you can bet there's an animator laying on the floor somewhere, huddled up in a ball, probably weeping. 
Always like a bit of motion, definitely in my animation. I can't wait till you see it because it is truly as real as an animated film can be with the real costumes, the three-dimensional models that are moving like real people every frame, the hair, the clothes are made out of real fabric. That's what I, I love about it so much. I think people will have an amazing, entertaining experience. It is so real and just beautiful to watch, really fun. It's genuinely a film that the whole family can go to because there's all sorts of levels in it and there's a good properly frightening thing for kids and there's a good level that adults can connect with as well. It's so wonderful and it's so delightful and it is amazing and it is awe-inspiring. It's just magic.